now is uh, James Cameron, diver, explorer, director of The Abyss, a deep-sea thriller, and most famously, of course, Titanic as well, as well as many other great films. James, I appreciate you joining us. Someone who's devoted his life to exploration, as you have in many ways, under the sea. I'm wondering what is going through your mind tonight. Well, thanks, Anderson. I mean, obviously, uh, we're all we're all kind of uh, heartsick from the outcome of this. And I've been living with it for a few days now, as some of my other colleagues in the deep submergence community. I was out on a ship myself when the event happened on Sunday. The first I heard of it was Monday morning. I immediately got on my network, uh, because it's you know a very small community in the deep submergence group, um, and uh, found out some information within about a half hour that they had lost comms and they had lost tracking simultaneously. The only scenario that I could come up with in my mind that could account for that was, a, was a, an implosion, a shockwave event so powerful that it actually took out a secondary system that has its own, <clears throat> its own pressure vessel and its own battery power supply, which is the transponder that the ship uses to track where the sub is. So I was thinking implosion then, that's Monday morning. I got on the horn again with some other people tracked down some intel that was probably of a military origin, although it could have been research, because there are hydrophones all over the Atlantic, and got confirmation that there was some kind of loud noise consistent with an implosion event. That seemed to me enough confirmation that I let all of my inner circle of people know that we had lost our comrades, um, and I uh, encouraged everybody to, to raise a glass in their honor on Monday. Then I watched over the ensuing days this whole sort of everybody running around with their hair on fire search, knowing full well that it was futile, hoping against hope that I was wrong, but knowing in my bones that I wasn't. And so it certainly wasn't a surprise today. Um, and I just feel terrible for the families that had to go through all these false hopes that kept getting dangled, you know, um, as, as it played out. You've, I, I just want to, to you, you said it was on Monday that you learned of these, these uh, listening devices under the water had picked up the, the sound of an implosion, or what was believed that's, to be an implosion? Yeah, that's, that's as it came to me, now that's hearsay, multiple, you know, um, I did, they were credible sources, right. so, you know, um, I took that as a factor that I multiplied in with the other factors, and I couldn't think of any other scenario in which a sub would be lost where it lost comms and navigation at the same time and stayed out of touch and did not surface. I was also told, and I don't have confirmation on this, that they had, they were on descent, they were a couple hundred meters above the seafloor, and they dropped their weights. Now, the only way for the ship to know that they had dropped their ascent weights, which would be a, an emergency abort, is if they had called that in, that they were, they were ascending. So I, I believe now that they had some warning, that they heard some acoustic signature of the, the hull beginning to delaminate. An investigation will hopefully eventually show what, what did happen because we all need to know as we go forward. The deep submergence community needs to know exactly what happened. You, you've made dozens of, I mean, just extraordinary deep water expeditions, including more than 30 to the Titanic itself. itself. You've also gone far deeper than the 13,000 feet where the Titanic is. I think you've gone deeper than yeah. just about anybody in, into the ocean. I, I wrote it I, into, uh, I forgot the name of the, the place you went, but the Challenger Deep, which is Challenger just extraordinary. Deep, yeah. You went yeah. in your own design. Yeah, you went in your own designed craft that's a submersible that was experimental and didn't go through the sort of the standard safety protocols. But Correct. the difference is you were not taking passengers on board. Would you exactly. ever have taken passengers on board uh, a submersible that had not gone through the standard no. maritime safety protocols? No, not at all. I mean, my sub that I went to the to the Challenger Deep dove safely three times deeper than than Titanic. Um, we made multiple dives in that in that sub. Um, that sub was a single seater, and it was only contemplated that myself and the engineer with whom I co-designed the vehicle would be the only pilots of that sub and we worked on it for seven years we knew every detail of it intimately I was involved in every phase of the testing so uh, you know I, I assessed the risks I understood them very well and those were risks I was willing, willing to, to take. take please join the conversation 
Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing um, to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news pilot, and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCat TV family. Please like and share McCat TV. Have, we love you all. ABS, Please support McCat TV Foundation by joining DNB, membership uh, and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.